Meet Macropus Rufus and Buffo Buffo. They're genome donors for Queen Boncilla and Sheriff Toaster. They happen to be really good monsters because of their new approach to self-identification. This we're gonna find out today. We'll also analyze the jester's jokes and try to figure out who the two sabotaging workers were trying to rescue. All this we'll discuss in today's letters analysis of Garden of Ban Ban Chapter 4. Let's go! Chapter 4 introduced us to a really good monster, Sheriff Toaster. Not only did he try to kill us, he helped us to fix the elevator and came with us to the lower floors. That's how we got an unexpected friend. Besides, he's not defenseless. But unfortunately, such an alliance led to negative consequences in the form of new enemies. The first one is Gesture, as known as Bitter Giggle, and another mutant Kitty Source. Besides, there is a new unknown threat coming from the kangaroo's pouch that now threatens the entire Ban Ban's kindergarten. She also left a secret message in the game. I made a separate video about it, but here we'll discuss it in the context of letters. Even more frightening is the fact that the monsters themselves didn't want to face this threat. Except for Gesture, he dreamed of making the Queen love and fulfilled his dream. The rest it doesn't care. I will begin the analysis with our ally, Sheriff Toaster. Because you are probably surprised that he is that good and helps us. And that outcome costs a lot of time, work and research. Sheriff's case is one of the most detailed in the game. Only Ban Ban's case is more detailed so far. Apart from the paper records of the observations conducted, in the game we can find the video of the genome donor for the future Sheriff, which we found in the game's third chapter. And this is really just a regular toad. Look how small it is. On a table or on a chair, we can see the sheriff's hat. And this hat is either a different one or it's a blunder because it looks too big. And if you compare it to other videos made in the same room, the size of this hat is even bigger than the monsters. Yeah, I guess it's a blooper. And from the following letters it becomes clear that Sheriff chose a hat to his liking. I'm not gonna read out the documents, but you can check them in the game or by pressing the pause button. Case 9 the first known document relating to Sheriff tells us that originally Sheriff was something like a clay toad and was bouncing around at night. But then it was modified the same way as the case 13, Stinger Flynn. The modification mentioned in the case also refers to the Queen Boncilla. We'll talk about her as soon as we're done with the Sheriff. There is an original story, a unique case so to speak. Or I'd say, cases. Well, I guess you got what I'm saying. And they wanted to introduce the Sheriff to who he is in the seventh update already. But as you remember from my previous reviews, the monsters are given all the memories of their human donors. And since they don't have any other memories, they can't help thinking that they are the ones who experience those memories. The monsters never denied their human origin, thinking that they are people their genome was taken from. That's why Ban Ban still thinks that he's Uthman, and even tells us so. The same goes for some of the previous cases. Only Stinger Flynn has come to a consensus between his memories and real circumstances of his existence. However, he often gets depressed because of that. Case 9, Update 7. So, the research worker's task was to create from the monster's identities something that they'd like to show to the clients of Garten. Some cases cause questions in this regard, but this time they needed the real sheriff of the town. I guess that's what Uthman and his customers decided. I also want to mention the sheriff's sudden growth. Apparently, he wasn't originally supposed to be that big, based on the letters in this chapter. According to the letters from the previous chapters, size of the monsters is a thing that cannot be controlled properly. However, Stinger Flynn has been decreased in size in Chapter 4. And why that happened I'll tell you in the next video, so subscribe if you don't want to miss this out. Case 9, Update 9. The research workers used a method similar to daily propaganda by the media. The future sheriff was shown Wild West movies and shows and somehow it worked. So the sheriff began to believe that he was the sheriff. But there was a problem. The sheriff identified himself as a member of Ban Ban's gang and treated the entire working personnel as criminals. Also these cute buckets with eyes and supposedly children. We don't know for sure if anyone died at the hands of the sheriff, but research workers call these methods of interrogating criminals too brutal for a human to survive. I wonder what kind of movies the sheriff was shown. We can only joke and speculate about that. The ruthless sheriff toaster could get a man killed. But how he managed to survive his interrogation? The next update of the Toaster's case is just another proof that Javanium creatures can experience things completely out of research workers' control. Case 9, Update 12. The Sheriff just suddenly rethought everything when they decided to send him to the lower floor for some reason. 
The toaster himself told us that he was thrown down here like he was trash, which made him hopeless. But Queen Bonesilla had been moved to the same floor earlier, and she accepted Toaster as her subject. The sheriff had a change of mind and decided, as he said, to fight for good-hearted individuals and for children too. Also, in this document we can see the abbreviation LLTT, and we'll come across it again today. It's spelled in full only once, and this is the lower-level transport team, and they sent Toster to the lower floor. And they also did the same to the Queen, as we'll find out from the two documents in case 14. Something really strange was going on with the Queen. According to her, the Scepter has magical powers, and based on the documented observations, the children in her pouch were dangerous, and so-called the end of the world scenario was depicted, when her reflexes would loosen the pouch and the naughty ones would escape. According to the documents, the Queen tried to communicate with them, which has been forbidden to do so since she was transferred to the floor where we found her. And besides, they took her scepter away from her just in case, and prohibited to talk with her children in the pouch. Speaking of the scepter and the children, yeah, she does have children in the pouch. They're just called the naughty ones. The second document makes it clear that the kangaroo's kids can get out of the pouch by themselves. How do they grow up in there? I have no idea. Apparently they came out of nowhere because of the kangaroo's donation. The real kangaroo. The children probably didn't behave very well and was up to the future to figure out what was going on with the pouch and where that leads. Scepter. Does it have magical powers and if there's any magic in the Garden of Ban Ban universe? Creating creatures of some kind of clay with the help of genetic engineering and a unique substance Chivenium is already a science fiction. Also, think of that weird ray from the pouch. Maybe the scepter indeed has some unusual properties, but we need to know its nature. But we don't. But the Sheriff Toaster at the end of Chapter 4 said that the Queen's scepter is the only thing that can stop this madness. Let's get back to the Queen's story. As you can see, the kangaroo's kids just can't get out of the bag by themselves. Obviously, we may assume laughter as a reflex. And when Jester made the Queen laugh, she loosened the pouch and something burst out of it that was coming from these naughty ones' cases. Unfortunately, there is no information on individual cases of children in the game. But why keep them in a pouch instead of taking them out and isolating them for a while, since they are so obscure and dangerous? That's too weird for me. Looking at the Queen's behavior, and as you may recall, she did consider herself a Queen. She was undergoing the same procedures as the Sheriff to impose a new identity instead of down her memories. By the way, I guess you want to hear about the cure codes. The developers left a secret message encoded in them. To find it, I had to combine all the parts of the cure codes, and here's what I got. Of course, it looked like a link, and it worked in a certain sequence. The message relates to the creatures in the pouch. I analyzed it in more detail in this video. And now I want to move on to the workers' letters. This is no less interesting part of Garden of Ban Ban Universe. And sometimes creepy, like this betrayal letter. I always wondered why we found letters about this massive face, but nothing bad ever happened to us when we meet it. And moreover, we never heard it laughing. But it could have been the gesture, as known as Bitter Giggle, who was coming up to the worker. Most likely this was the final letter from the worker. The worker mentioned the screaming coming from above, as did the Quinn. She heard rumbling and screaming approximately at the same height, in other words, on the minus third floor. And that's where all children, including ours, are probably located. Stinger Flynn hid them there and was far away from them. He informed us about it himself, which proves that they're really on the minus third floor. The next letter is quite an interesting one. It gives an impression of a worker who apparently was running away from someone, decided to go to the floor below, in other words to the minus fourth, and then realized that he can't go back anymore. It seems that the worker stumbled across this room with gestures, or maybe some other room with even more terrifying monsters. This worker most likely also went missing or was eaten. Here's a list of jokes from this room, and this list was written by Bitter Giggle himself. Almost every single one of them is a ponary play of words, but probably the only joke I actually like was the one about the kangaroo's surgery. What do you call a surgery performed by a kangaroo? A operation. I'd call this a baby-saving surgery. That would be nice black humor. So, what concerns jokes? Wow. They were all terrible, but the kangaroo appreciated them. And we got to the two sabotaging workers, at least they were going to take a child's genome for some reason and use it illegally. It's mentioned in this letter. Secretive letter part 1. Not only did they want to steal it, they also picked the most preferable one. That's creepy. 
What's happened next and who were those workers? The beginning of the letter is similar to the letter supposedly from Weverly Mason from the chapter 2. The exact same beginning, hey. It talked about the events before the disaster and hiding of Zolfius in the depth of the facility. But the second chapter called the letter a friendly letter. We have the second part of this letter. The secretive letter part 2. From this second part, it becomes clear that these two workers wanted to get one of the monsters out there. And the preferred one was a bilingual monster. As we know, all the talking creatures in the Garden of Ban Ban are native English speakers. But one of them, and that's Zolfius, hasn't spoken a word of English so far. But he actually said a word in Spanish. If he speaks English as well, he's bilingual speaker. Waverly and Uthman, as we learned from the previous letters, wanted to get away to Spain. And if these secret letters also belong to them, then it all fits. But how did they plan to get him out? Here we got a lot of questions. Probably while well, he was asleep, so they didn't want anyone to come down. And why? The way I see it, Zolfius doesn't care anymore because he doesn't even have the eyes. Also, the moment with Genome Donor from Children is not quite clear to me, as the letters only contain hints without specifics. Perhaps Uthman and Waverly couldn't have children, but the lab equipment made it possible to fix the problem and make a child through in vitro, so to speak. But then it remains weird. Why did they need someone else's child with specific parameters? In general, I haven't figured this out completely what the authors of the letters were up to and it's suspicious that the chosen child could be ours. And if it turns out that we don't find him with the other children, then we can't guarantee that he's okay. Maybe the chapter 5 will explain the situation with the child. Although we still find his letters, and by the way, in this chapter, the letters are quite positive. Dear mommy, we just had the best party ever. There are illustrations of our child and his friend, Stinger Flynn and Miss Mason with an angry face. It's kind of weird, considering that Stinger Flynn is conducting some kind of experiments there. But maybe they're not that terrible after all. In fact, when we find him, it'll turn out that they were just fooling around. You were in the Bimbactus World channel, check out the previous letters analysis to keep on top of it. And watch my next videos. Ah!